Well, it's 100 degrees, and of course, where do I go? Total, total fish and pets. Let's go inside and take a look. I'm gonna save the best for last. They've got some very, very interesting inventory in this place. Let's go. Ken, the owner of the shop, was very proud of how he had a full inventory, a, a full selection of just about anything any fish keeper could want. He referred to his store as a sort of a Costco and felt that uh, his, his business was staying uh, pretty busy even with the uh, COVID going on because he kept such a good inventory. I always like to check out the frozen food and he had some, uh, some krill which I love to feed to my, uh, to my bigger predator haps. So I picked up a couple packets. As you can see, everything was very, very well stocked. While I was there, he was in the middle of upgrading some uh, security features in the store. And uh, everything was pretty much in order. He even had the, uh, my go-to for ick, ick attack, which I haven't had to use too often, but that's a good thing. He had some filters. For those who like to cut their own, like I do, just the filter material as well as uh, some of the uh, factory inserts that you can buy, you know, the cartridges and things like that, as well as a pretty large selection of, of uh, tanks and accessories, including a lot of those uh, frameless, you know, those, the all glass nano tanks that are becoming pretty popular, had those in all sizes. He also had a great selection of wood, as you can see here. When you first walk in the store and make a right, you run into these two very large ponds. And you have two different sizes of koi, a small, medium, and then over here you get into the, the larger koi. Very, very pretty. I would say these, these two were probably about 500 gallons each. A lot of filtration going on. He also had a, a very nice selection of salt, salt water, uh, in this case, some live rock. He said he was doing the hard work for the aquarium keepers. In other words, he was, uh, instead of just selling dry live rock, he would go ahead and cure it and get bacteria going on it so it was ready to go and get coral attached to it. If you need some salt water, I think Ken can take care of you. You can see here just some real nice uh, coral frags. The camera doesn't really do them justice. In person, they were really, really popping. My favorite, of course, are, are what are called uh, the soft corals, like this one here. Very, very pretty. You have to have some pretty powerful power heads to keep that water moving all the time for those types of corals, I believe. Look at those colors, very, very pretty. He also had some of the, um, they look like arowana, but they're not arowana. He had some of these in these small containers, a lot like that, that uh, shop that I visited up in San Francisco, where they would keep the fish in these small containers. Wasn't too worried about it. When you take a look at the filtration he had going on, those are like 20 foot towers, three of them, each one servicing different banks of fish. Look at this big idol, Moorish idol. All the fish were very, very active and healthy, and he was in the middle of a maintenance day, so he was uh, a little bit concerned about the look of the tanks, but I look at the, uh, the fish. Are the fish active? Are they interacting with me? Do they seem alert? And I would say that every fish I came across here in this shop fits that category. They were all very active, all alert, Colors look good, fins look good. I didn't see any fish with collapsed fins just sort of hanging, hanging in the corner, waiting to die. I didn't see really any of that. I saw a lot of, uh, a lot of active, healthy fish. Obviously he knows what he's doing. He's been at it for quite a while. Quite the uh, goldfish collection, 
course, these are all black. They remind me of the old mollies I used to keep years ago. But they're a type of goldfish and a type of hybrid, I guess. Here's another type here, not really my thing. Certainly an, an unusual shape. And probably the result of many, many years of, uh, of hybrids. You know, breeding breeding projects. I will say these are very, very pretty and probably my favorites. These red-headed specimens. I think Evan Alexander IFG recently picked up some of these for his pond. Very good looking fish. Love the color, that shade of red. And these had a very nice um, shade of gold on them. Almost a, almost a metallic red gold which I thought was very, very pretty. If I was keeping goldfish, those would certainly be a, a, a variety I would consider. So certainly quite the selection with goldfish, all types really. Look at the red head on that guy. So if you're into goldfish, you need to get over to Ken's. He's not going to disappoint. Not only does he have a variety of, uh, of types and a large selection, but he has them in different sizes. So you can pick up the smaller ones for the better prices. And if you want to, if you need to, like some of us have to do, like if I was to put something in my 150, I'd have to get a bigger fish. And so he has those as well. So you can pretty much... You can pretty much dial in whatever size fish you need. Beautiful betta tank here, and I don't know who says betta can't live with other fish. Look at this. Heavily planted, very pretty setup. And look at this. It looks like a um, one of those big sardine balls. Again, look at the interaction these fish have. They're all coming to me. They were not afraid. Probably thought that it was feeding time, but again, that is a sign of a healthy fish. Fish that's coming up to the glass and interacting with you. These guys really pretty. I think they get pretty big too. I've seen these in much, much larger varieties. These were not for sale. I thought they were fascinating. I actually prefer the parrot fish in these types of colors, the uh, the greens, and uh, you know, not that not that strong orange red, but the other varieties of parrot fish. I, I, in my to my eye, those are a bit more more attractive. But you know, some people love these orange red ones. Look at this flagfish. He was about 14 inches, massive. I, he wasn't for sale. I suspect he's probably a fish that somebody bought. It got too big, and they brought it in, and Ken just adopted it, like so many uh, so many shops do. Look at this planted setup. A planted tank with fish that school moving around is very, very attractive. And yes, I do believe he was using some CO2. And his plants on a scale of one to 10, I would say probably about an eight. They don't quite pop maybe like the way over they do at CK, but still they're very pretty. A decent selection of live bearers as well. Platties, mollies, sword tails. These are called barracudas. Some African cichlids, some dragon blood, some OBs. I think I might have saw a um, red shoulder back there. Nothing that really jumped out at me as something I wanted to have right this moment. Some red hooks that were very, very pretty. Another flag tail back there. I really like those flag tails. 
Oh, what's this geo doing in here? It's a good size. That's about a six, seven inch fish. Nice collection of Oscars. It was kind of funny. All of the uh, darker ones, dark coloration ones, had migrated to one side, and the lighter red ones were on the on the other side, hanging out. Look at this guy. He was adorable. Just following my finger around. Kind of a young flower horn, maybe just a few inches. And again, as I moved through the store, you would see more and more varieties and larger variations of that type of fish. Again, you have these small enclosures with the um, massive amounts of water circulating through them. Again, like that shop that I went to up in San Francisco. Looks like you had some new arrivals come in. Another row of goldfish. And again, smaller varieties. So if, you, if you're on a budget, but you want to get four or five of something, he can hook you up with a smaller variety so you can take, take home some more of them. Look at these uh, clowns. Very active. If you buy clowns, never, never buy less than three. They really do much better in groups. Even more than three is ideal. These guys were pretty massive. Pushing 20 inches or more. That fish was pretty interesting with the red tones in the body. I know the Geo. Not too many of them. These are pretty. Might be a little bit of a tin foil. Again, just a large variety of community fish in a heavily planted tank. Very nice. As you can see, even though the shop looks kind of small from the outside, and look at this, look at these angels, how interactive they are. How at any rate, it, it looks small from the outside, but you get inside and it's row after row of selection and fish. Again, in, in a variety of sizes. These are like the size of a quarter. And you can work your way up to a much larger variety. Again, smaller, these are smaller angels. Maybe even bred here. Very small. These guys were giants. These were 10 inch plus clown loaches. He looks like, he looks like an old distinguished uh, clown loach. <laughs> he should be wearing a jacket and smoking a pipe. And he's got one in the back that looks just as big. And he was asking a lot of money for him. Who knows if he even wants to sell them at this point. Maybe he's gotten attached to them. But those were massive. Then you turn a corner and all of a sudden you're greeted by this sort of rainbow of discus. And again, they were active. They were very healthy looking. Colors were popping, fins were spread out. Very, very pretty. And available in all types of sizes from the size of a, uh, maybe a quarter, half dollar, all the way up to you know, your plate, your uh, dinner plate size specimens, snake skins and blue diamonds. Just beautiful, beautiful discus. I wish I'd, I'd had access to the shop back in the day when I was, uh, I was keeping discus. One of the problems I'd run into is, is a lack of variety. But that was not the case here. As you can see, of 
course, guppies. The ever popular guppies. And a very nice um, planted setup. More community tank fish. You know, your small, your little nano fish. Which, of course, are very popular for those folks who are keeping those smaller, frameless, frameless type tanks. Some platies and molly varieties. Very, very pretty. So you can pretty much find anything you're looking for here, whether it's live bears, egg layers, community fish, or your larger, more sought after fish. You know, special, I think, on guppies. But you know, your, your larger discus, your larger flower horns, your arowana type fish, you know, these, he had those in very large specimens as well as something that a person can get into if they're a beginner and grow out and move into larger tanks as he goes along. So don't let the storefront fool you. You're not gonna have a limited number of fish to choose from and you're not gonna have any uh, any real limitations in the uh, supplies. I thought this was kind of funny. He had on several tanks, no choosing. And when you think about it, you get a tank with let's say 25 or 30 of these, uh, of these cardinal neon tetras, right? You get some kid there saying, no, 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 I want that one, I want that one. <laughs> I think after a while, right? After a while, the owner just goes, mm. read the sign, kid, no choosing. <laughs> you get what the net catches. <laughs> I spent all afternoon trying to catch one tetra for somebody. <laughs> uh, but he had your, uh, you know, your, your regular neon tetras, plus cardinals, which for a while there were a little hard to find, but he had a good assortment of them. And, and you know, the prices were pretty fair, actually. Then you turn a corner and there you are. You're faced with a bunch of large discus again. Absolutely beautiful. This tank was tucked between, between the backs of two rows. He had set up this tank. Apparently he needed a little bit of overflow room. And you can see these orange red discus are just beautiful. I was very happy with the selection that I saw, and mostly I was happy with the, the level of health that I saw in the fish. And what that told me is that Ken really, really knows what he's doing. The guy really cares. Further down the aisle, a little bit, you know, some more angels. I kind of like the angels with the long flowing fins. One lonely discus. I don't know why he was living here in isolation. He looks like he's being punished. More discus. Love the white faces on these and the patterns, like on the red one there. Sometimes people call it a snakeskin pattern. Very, very pretty. Even a little bit of that, what you call pigeon blood. These bigger ones, of course, are always much more expensive. Look at this guy here. Absolutely gorgeous. I saw one of these guys at the American Cichlid Association in Houston. Very interesting looking fish, very pretty. Look at the size of these Oscars. These Oscars were, I would say, 18 inches or larger. Look at this guy. Do you know what this is? With the red and black in the back half? Beautiful fish. This tank was probably, I don't know, 400 gallons, maybe more. And it had these giants in it, like a giant gourami 
that arowana fish there. I mean, look at the size of these fish. Big giant yep, died. So it had a um, big flag tail in here too, I guess. Look at these guys. Now I'm not sure if you can really tell, so I'm gonna stand here next to the tanks so you get a, a reference. Those fish were huge. And then again, more of these gorgeous discus. Get that guy on the right, absolutely breathtaking. Beautiful fish. And then he has a collection of, um, as you get through these discus, some of the larger varieties, and of course they, they always cost a lot more. I mean, it takes years and years to get a discus to really grow out and be that large. Yeah, these are beautiful, huh? call these melons with that white face very very pretty just a tank full of those with a black background would be very very pretty at any rate I was quite surprised at how many tanks and how many discus he had and then I stumbled into a uh, another section of flower horns these were more in the medium in the medium to larger size. Look at the size of this guy. We've got that KOK, -K, that kook on the top of the head, that big bulge. The males have it, so the females don't. Look at the red on this guy. Looks like a giant brain. And then the final section of the of the shop, just a large variety of tanks, from small to very large, overflow boxes, tall tanks, long tanks, quite a few, and then a section of feeder fish. And again, no choosing. <laughs> oh no, no, I want that one. The one right, yeah, that one, the one to the right of the gold one. <laughs> Oh man, this is pretty nice. It's a little misty, misty setup. A little gimmicky, but still kind of pretty. I like it. So that's Total Fish and Pets. If you're in the area, stop by. They've got some great inventory. I was very impressed with the stuff they have. And uh, what about those discus and those flower horn, huh? Pretty amazing. I really like what I saw, very friendly. Uh, Ken uh, runs the place. He's had it for quite a while. And uh, so if you're in the area, uh, give this shop some love, some support. It was too hot out there. I had to get back in the car so I can access this air conditioner. Check out, uh, check this shop out. Great shop, great selection, surprising amount of, of uh, selection of fish and supplies. And don't forget to hit that bell and uh, hit, that, hit that bell and that uh, thumbs up if you like the video. And I hope to see you on, uh, on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Thank you, my friend. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. It's cooled down to 99 degrees. Really refreshing. <laughs>